Google. Um, we can, well, we're going to talk about this later, don't worry. Um, so anyways, of course, we're trying to find this resistivity and then find the rock types so we can find the water. Find the resist resistivity. Yeah. Find resistivity, then find rock types, then find water. <coughs> Right, so we have this diagram of uh, this general picture of the hydrogeology underground and then matching those units to the expected resistivity value. So, the resistivity the machine Okay, so following this model, target, setup, current, charges, potentials, we can look at, we can take a, a look at more of the details here. So, we target to set up to current to charges the potential room the uh, so our target is an aquifer right so let's say the aquifer here is uh, it's, it's just it's just a very thin layer that goes infinitely out so horizontally everything is the same there's only a difference when you go down. Yeah. So this aquifer it has a low resistivity, uh, let's say 100 or 50 ohm meters, and then it's surrounded by rocks that's higher resistivity, perhaps 500 ohm meters. So I'm a poma minute, I'm a bona, I'm a shit aquifer, I'm a rock, do a resistivity at Nere, or Nere, or Mazay, Nazi, the Yala, she, she may. I'm a Alma, do the Kahari, and I had a rock, tell my is or not. I have a chin, a chin, and I want to resistivity up. So, and then when we have the four electrodes, you know, we, we hammer them in, and the hammer, and we do this four times, we inject the current, uh, we can do some uh, modeling. It's a mathematical modeling and see that the current uh, it largely stays inside the uh, the low resistivity layer. So I the uh, the electrodes like the yaita like the one you yaita like you and let's see down here like this are now and let's see down here I resistivity near the amount of this will be made on the For those of you interested this map is showing the current density that's measured in Amperes per meter squared. So it's the amount of current flowing through uh, an area. Oh, well, what is the unit again? So uh, the reason that I haven't been finding it on the computers is because current, I've been current density. Anaconda anaconda with uh, double M. Like, like how much current is oh. a single Anna. So see this area is green. It means there's a lot of current. Uh, concentrated in this area. So I say on Jahari has our Ima, yes, he's on the Pobiro, Subiro, Bogus Tinder, and Yare. As you remember from the other slide, uh, when we have a change in resistivity, um, we also we also have charges that are accumulating. But I'm a resistivity, the down lobby is on Emma, charges there to a lobby. Charges the group getting on it. Okay, so then it's just imagine there are a lot of these plus and minus charges inside here. Am I the right near the one matter of plus to minus to touch on my Yeah. Um, and then if we measure the voltage along this profile, then this is what we will measure for. Uh, for the charges. The charges to uh, the voltage. What's the voltage? Voltage. 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 Voltage.
it's v equals some constant times the charge, the amount of the charge q divided by the distance. So the graph, it, it's it's like this. It's this kind of shape. So from slow, my big now. Yeah, you're talking about equations. I can yeah. remember your equations. Yeah. I, I wouldn't go into it. No? Now. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, okay, well, basically, so, we're, so this is A. See, A, B, or A, M, N, B. So we measure the voltage at M. It's this value. We measure voltage at N. It's this value. And then... We take the difference. So A M N so the point is the time yeah, right? So M and N the So the point is yeah. the point. And then the point of the point is the the point the point is the equation based on all the distances between the points. So the point is the point is the point is the point is the the point the the we can find the resistivity, rho, by taking potential difference between m and n, then dividing by uh, the current times this number g. Current time. Uh, like divided by yeah, i. Uh, uh, equation is yeah. yeah, so it's kind of hard to see, but all these, all these numbers here, that's all g. So it becomes V equals rho I G. And then if you divide by I G, then this rho equals V over I G. This G, it's a, it's a geometric factor. So it will change depending on how far apart these electrodes are spaced. Natural, yeah, qua wave of motive, right? G got it, then put down that you talk about. Now, you notice that it's not just rho, it's rho with a small a. So, this is not just resistivity, we call it the apparent resistivity. Resistivity to cool. Well, so in a rho, you have that rho a in there. That's an apparent uh, resistivity. Uh, resistivity. Uh, so we call it an apparent resistivity because it's kind of like this this average, okay? Say like uh, over here, when you make the measurement, there's the question: Well, we're measuring resistivity, but of which part? Is it is it this part? Is it this part? Is it this part? We don't know. So resistivity time is a very important thing. Let's put it layer. So we have time mala. We are going to learn it. Yeah. Um, so this is like some kind of average of of this layer and this layer and this layer. So I bend layer yet average level, okay, area yet layer yet is actually the pianya resistivity level. Yeah. So that's why we call it apparent resistivity, not, apparent not just resistivity. Not just resistivity. Yeah. resistivity yeah. Apparent, apparent resistance. Are there any questions right now? Yeah, I agree. Two, maybe. There's no such thing as a stupid question. We're all, we're all trying to learn. So, any questions? Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look uh, at this seven-step framework in a bit more detail. Um, so Doug discussed it in the morning. The first step is the setup, right? Um, so, you know, we collect all of our information. What are we trying to do? What is the problem? And then the properties, well, our property obviously is electrical resistivity. So, 
to the other properties, properties of the PC or the server. So they jump out the general of your electrical resistivity of the map properties. And for surveys, well, we're, we're doing just resistivity, but uh, there are many different ways that we can set up the survey. <coughs> for instance, you know, do we put, is it like A, B, M, N, or A, B, M, N? There are many different ways we can do that. ซาเวลเนี่ยจริงมาแล้วเลยว่าเออเอ่อค่าเอ่อมาดูได้ผมสั่งเนี่ยท่าเลยอ่ะเลยเอาเอ่อ for our case uh, the data is going to be uh, some kind of map of parent resistivity whether that's 1D or 2D or even 3D We'll process the data and for this particular method, uh, mostly that means just we use the geophysical inversion that Dr. Oldenburg discussed. Once we have the inversion, we can try to make uh, a kind of geologic or hydrogeologic interpretation. Now, so much our interpretation, the phenomenon, for example, model for the phenomenon. And then we can do a synthesis, which is kind of like a, a big review or evaluation. We can ask questions. We can try to uh, integrate or combine geophysical knowledge into other disciplines like uh, geology, engineering. We probably want to compare with previous results. <coughs> For instance, if I if if I did a survey uh, in in you know in Mudan last year, then maybe this year we go back to Mudan to test that we get the same data. And then we ask, well, after integrating all this, all of this information, are we happy with the results? If we're happy, then that's good. If we're not happy, then you know we can go back to the first step. Um, so of course our problem <coughs> is aquifers in one state. Uh, you want to go uh no, I don't I think you could just sort of flip through. I don't think you need to go into okay. detail. We'll come we'll come back. Okay. But you can just mention like which, like which step we're actually on. We have a setup. We have. Yeah. So so right now we're on the setup step. Now put a lot of she need a thing on there. Put a seven framework and then they set up the same way that she did, right? Yeah. So you know what is the problem? What kind of work has already been done? I mean, uh, all of you know this. She got by look at the level by the now I have to do nothing today. I should have done now. Shall we work? Uh, set up step. Um, okay, so that's how we yeah. Yeah. We, we we already know this. Uh, basically, the goal is using resistivity to find the the deep aquifers and then drill one. The hard job we did. Oh, bro, net the aquifers will show how they move to the other one. The 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 junction the job. And then physical properties. Well, do you see resistivity? Um, and then we said that. Our, our target is this fresh water, which typically has resistivity of uh, you know, 50 to 100 or 20 to 100 mm meters. So now, the way I talk about it, I get to go, no? But resistivity is less than that. So now, I'm going to get a fresh water shower. So it's interesting because 50 to 100, that can either be low or high. Uh, Depending on what is surrounding the fresh water. So, I mangas and the yas are the Guahamushi, the Guahamushi is rather IGO, Guyan Tare, ya put to PC the Bomoti Bureau to yet resistivity at the Guahamushi. 
Okay, so for the survey, um, the one, one kind that is very common is the slumberger sounding. Slumberger sounding. Yeah, so that's where you have the slumberger method. Yes, that's where the uh, a potential electrodes M and N are uh, quite close together. And then the current uh, electrodes are quite far apart. So M and N are the same as A and B. They are the same as A and B. They are the same as A and B. Yes. So I believe the DRD has, um, they have possession of a Syscal R2 system. So you can do the slumber day method with the system. So the DRD is not the same as the system. They are the same as the system. They are the same as the system. They are the same as the system. Of course for us, we are going to be using uh, or dance system is Syscal R1 Plus, which can do 2D surveys. Which is Syscal R1 Plus with the mom, eh? Who's a 2D to a landing, eh? She's a man, eh? Who's 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 a man, eh? Now, for this case study, uh, the data, so this was taken with the Syscal R2. Um, this is showing the, uh, the electrode separation and the apparent resistivity that was measured at that separation. Parents I have to do a different folder. Yeah. Remember, it's row. Uh, row do you have access row. to the uh, A A okay A? So it's called row. row. To our slides. Yeah. What would you mean? Oh. Yeah, On the Dropbox. Uh, yeah. I know row A and we have. Oh no, I don't. See like this. Uh, 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 is it uh, uh, apparent? Yeah. Apparent resistivity. Yes. That's right. Because so we. It's listed out in there. I'm sure we have. So apparent resistivity is on y axis, and x axis is AB divided by 2. So, like AB for A, M, and B. I think we'll just try to straighten so all that out. Distance tonight. from A to B divided by 2. AB will begin it. Just think of it as like the spacing, the horizontal spacing. So, starting point and end point A B is not. Starting point and end point A B, which is A, which is B. Give me the graph. A A is. You don't have it. It's like a distance. Distance. Distance of A B divided by two. Yes. So see here, here the distance was 10 to the power of 1. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not, well, 10, 10. 10 to the power of 1. 10 to the power of, 10 to the power of 1. Okay. And then here the distance is 10 to the power of 2, which is, who can tell me? What is 10 to the power of 2? 10 to the power of 2 about 10. 1,000. Not 1,000. 100. 100. Yes. 100. Okay. What is 10 to the 5? Yes. No. A B by two means you mean A B by two. One hundred thousand. What is A B? A B means the distance between A and B. A and B. Yes, like A B. So the distance between half distance. A B divided by two. Half. Yeah. Okay. So what we see here is that when the distance is very small, then you have high resist high resistivity value. Then when you make the distance bigger, we have Lower resistivity value. Hey, Huawei, ah, ni ni So, ni ni, no? Resistivity, ah. So, when you have a small separation, then uh, it's only very. The current will only go uh, very shallowly, not very deep. So, get that? I know Kuga. Oh, in it. So, sorry, I know Kuga. And then when you increase separation, then you go deeper. Yes. So this tells us that uh, somewhere deeper, there is a lower resistivity area, which maybe is uh, a groundwater aquifer. So not quite, but as I am, you go away and we are going to go. And that's it. Water. That's it. 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 Low resistivity. She does not hear. She she does not hear. Low. And then shallower, closer to surface, and there's higher resistivity there. Maybe like a laterite or a, a, a sandstone. 
所以第一招就是，龙王招对菩萨，你们信心要稳定，对吧？对你们是这样。However, how so? How deep exactly is this? You know, this is a distance, but it does not tell us how deep is this aquifer. So to find that out, we need to go to the next step. So now that the sand is dry, I'm sorry. Now, black water, we don't need to dry it. So we don't need to dry it. Now, now the sand is dry. Yeah. So this next step for us is inversion. Now the sand is inversion. Yeah. Um. So this was a. Pardon me. No, that's a smooth model inversion, but it's it's in thirty layers or something. So this is what we call a smooth inversion, and it has many different layers. Smooth inversion. Yes. This is the particular process in that that's used. That's a inversion in the level. Smooth inversion. Layers are nine bar and half. Okay. So. I think we. I won't go into details about this. But, yeah, you can see as we go deeper, um, the the model shows that uh, resistivity. There's a a small a minimum, and then another minimum, and then it increases. So the output net net value for my job the minimum but net zone yeah maybe now that the ten net 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 output my job the full of net value that from my job. So the interpretation is that this uh, low resistivity zone number one is a shallow aquifer. So number one, yeah. So machine, yeah. Was that the resistivity near it and the I so much at all? Thing name, that or thing name, the arm or whatever. And then the low resistivity zone number two, maybe it's the fractured aquifer. Not that. Number one, to the ah. Resistivity nere ni ada refraction aqua fire pin main pin main ni pun ada aqua ni ada sampo yang lah pin main ni. Remember that we we said earlier we had this table and we thought that fractured or weathered bedrock is in range of forty to four hundred ohm meters. Now kita ada time tu, kita ada layer di sini lah, kan? Tu ya range lah. This is the range. This is about about thirty, right? Do we know how to read a log log graph? Yes, you know. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, 100. So this is approximately 30 ohmmeters. 50. So, well, approximately. Approximately. So 40 or 50, it's inside this range. So possibly. And then as we go much deeper, then the resistivity gets much higher, approaching 1,000, 10 to the 3. 10 to the 3, I love it. Net 1, we resistivity. So 10 to the 3 or over, that could be something like uh, igneous rock, so like uh, granite, metamorphic rock, but with no, no fractures. So now that outside set will do me so me and one hour is not possible. So the yardage to them can I are quite some machine that don't give you the time. So of course, to actually get to that point, you need to drill. I 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 need to drill. The synthesis is the final step, but as I said, uh, to really find out what is happening, whether our interpretation is correct, uh, we need to drill the hole and compare the information. So we do not know the answer right now. So synthesis is the result of 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 the So now we're going to apply the uh, seven-step framework to another survey that I did with the DRD team in 2018 in Kongta Lake Village. Uh, 
So again, we can do this thing, set up property, survey, data, processing, interpretation, synthesis. So we sit down and get data out there. We process them, interpret them, and then synthesize them. So the setup was that we found this research paper, and it described the design for a very cheap DC resistivity instrument. That I am who say for a DC, that what DC set up, no? Love you, yeah, and have. I am love to love to jam. Yeah. So. You know, this, this instrument uh, with the cables, the cost is about 30,000 USD. This one, about 500 USD. So, let's see, the cable is the cable, the cable is the cable, the cable is the cable. So, this, this machine in 2018 was a lot more limited, but we we didn't have any support from an organization like Geoscientists Without Borders. So this was the first step. Um, so, of course, the purpose of the survey um, first was to identify if the instrument is working correctly. So we do some tests. Specifically, the Japanese Japanese International Cooperation Agency (JICA) they did a survey in Awanji Village in Berlin Township, and it was five kilometers apart from Tambole. Berlin Township. Berlin Berlin Munich, my daughter, I go Awanji. So we couldn't go to Awanji because I think KNU was So we went as close as we could to try to make a direct comparison. Will we see the same results? So do our teaching at any time get us or watch in the Another interesting question is, well, if the results are different, then um, why are they different? You know, is it because the instrument is not working correctly? Or is it because five kilometers apart, uh, it's a different different conditions? Of course, another key question is, is the survey location a good place to drill for water? And if it is a good location, well, how deep should we drill? You know, yeah, and this is Kate Highway during the survey. You see, she's she's holding up a hammer. Um, physical properties. Well, we've seen this before. Okay. Uh, how about survey? So the survey we used it was a, a Wenner array. What? It's called Wenner array. It's like a bit different than Slumberger array. Slumberger net. The what a Wenner array is. Not a little bit. Survey Gonzale. Wenner array. So basically, in the Wenner array. The, dis the distance between all the electrodes is the same, so same distance. So I want to remember the electrode with a power there to do time. And here's the data that we obtained in, in 
Tonkale village again. Uh, this is a this is not the same as AB over two, but it's some kind of spacing. And then here we measure the apparent resistivity at that spacing. Um, apparent resistivity, right? Well, we change you change the the length and measure like that. Yes. So while well, we do change the time that we change the time, right? Okay. But the time delay, uh, the time delay, 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 and then we used uh, a very simple free software. Uh, we used this method called Monte Carlo inversion, and this is the model that was produced. That are through now some two line nine model for the rock. But what way? What what what? Uh, it's, it's called Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Yeah. Monte Carlo is right. Oh, is that about oh oh inversion? We don't build a two direct three point. Not that model. So as you can see. Uh, again, there's possibly a, a two aquifer system. There's uh, this layer here with a low resistivity, and then another zone, lowest zone, with a low resistivity of maybe 70 ohmmeters. So, not that I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to do it. But I'm not going to do it. 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 Okay, so see, so we took this and then our, we just turn it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So our interpretation is that there's a very high resistivity layer here. Uh, the value is maybe 2,000 ohmmeters. We think it is a bedrock, possibly. Interpretation to our how to a different point like that. I must have the town now she would not point like that near the piano. As a bedrock, and the bedrock is from approximately five to twenty meters underground. Okay, so you know, 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 you it could be 40 to 400 ohmmeters. So 70 is inside the range. Not quite the resistivity. Nedwari alba. Na se mi alga na se mi da yo wari kaja. Resistivity nedwari kaja. Ema kaja. Ela kaja. Fracture the profile of shinai mlabo. Kwe el ya du du dan tan kanare kwe el tare jok mi jok jo mi shinai mlabo no. So for synthesis. It's interesting because we can look at the the data from Jaika in Awanji Village. Right. So this is this is Jaika in Awanji Village. This is us in Tonkale Village. So uh Kupaka Jara Jaika look at it now the Awanji Malukere Hat Tibet Tangalia through the idea look at it happen. So if we make the comparison we can see uh Maybe the curves have some similarities, but uh, they're also quite different in terms of uh, the, the values and the, the locations of the minimum. However, in both cases, uh, at depth, there is a lower resistivity zone, right? Uh, resistivity nere is the power band in our number. Over here, the low resistivity zone is about 90 ohmmeters. Again, that's inside the range 40 to 400. So both these surveys show that there could exist uh, a fractured aquifer. So I'm a general to your I'm a to use resistivity nere is only two in a linear the those are the real problem. G fresh water to 90 to 90 in the air one. Um, of course, uh, to actually find out, then we have to do drilling at the location, and I'm not sure if there's been drilling there yet. I'm not going to like that, but it's too busy now. It's the idea. I think I'm a time or time. Did they go drilling? I do have it, not yet. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of the background section. 
So hopefully you have some more understanding of the physics and the hydrogeology. So it's not it's not really about the physics, not about the connect, not really about the hydrogeology.